and welcome to my series of short videos in which we discuss how the Arduino interacts with various electronic components. Yes, in less than 15 minutes we'll go over the basics, how they can be used, hints, tips, tricks and traps. Stay tuned, let's learn about another one this week. Capacitors, yes, now you see there's a selection here on my desktop. And these are all pretty old and pretty big, so you can see how things have improved over the last few decades. Some of these are literally 30 years old. And this little strip down here is what is an ultra-modern surface mount capacitor. In fact, it's so, so small that you really can't tell it, but it's that little black dot in the middle of each square. Tiny. Really easy to solder as well. Not. Now, today... Um, you'd probably end up with a selection of capacitors like these two boxes I've got here. The ones on the right are all known as electrolytic capacitors and have larger values. We'll talk about this in a little while. But as you can see, there's a fair old range in there, and I've used these for a few months now. So uh, they're slowly going down, but uh, they really are useful. And they come in a range of values, which you can probably just about pick out on the lid, which I've written on. And, of course, there are different voltages that they can run at, the maximum voltage they can run at. The bigger the voltage, the bigger physically the capacitor as well. So you want to get your voltage as close to the supply line of your circuit as is sensible to do so. These ones over here are much smaller because the values are much smaller. As you'll see in the next bit of the video, these range from 0.1 microfarads up to 10 microfarads. And they're all pretty small and they fit on a PCB or something very easily. They're also breadboard friendly, by the way. And these are not electrolytic, they're not polarised, and we'll talk about those terms in the next bit of the video. What's that biscuit you see on my desktop? Sorry? <laughs> All right, you can call it a cookie if you really want to. But it's a, it's, a, it's a sandwich, really, made of two cookies with a filling in the middle. And it's a good way to envisage how all capacitors are made. Whatever the shape or size, they all basically come down to something like this, where you've got a conductive plate one side, normally foil, another one the other side, but there's a, something in the middle. That's called a dielectric trick. You don't really need to know about that, but it's a, it's a thin insulating layer in the middle that stops conduction between the two layers. Now, if this were a lot longer and a lot thinner, you can imagine by rolling it up, it would eventually turn into something like this. Yeah, rolled up cylindrical thing. But of course they don't have to be cylinders, and indeed the smaller ones are not. But that's a good way of thinking about a capacitor. Two plates, conductive plates, held apart by a thin dielectric layer. Right, let's have a look in a bit more detail at what capacitors can do for us in an Arduino world using the whiteboard. Let's start by drawing the symbol for a capacitor, and it's pretty much like that. So you have the lead coming in, you've got the plate, think of that uh, biscuit that I showed you. There's the other plate and there's the other lead, fine. Um, there is another symbol though that's just as important and there's a variation on that where you've got the top one uh, thicker like that. The, you also might get the bottom one uh, filled in as well, but that'll do for now. Now the difference between this is that this is an electrolytic capacitor and it's polarised. That means the positive plate here must be kept positive in relation to this one. It doesn't mean this has to go down to ground, but it must not be more positive than this side or bad things will happen. Now this one is non-polarised, which means it just doesn't matter which way round this connects it up. This could be plus here or minus here or the other way around. Not a problem either way. Great, so that's the two types of capacitor that we'll be concentrating on in an Arduino environment. Uh, what are they used for? Right, the first use is that of a decoupling capacitor. For those of you who have watched my series on how to create your Uno from scratch, you may have noticed that where the VCC went in and the ground, I put a decoupling capacitor here to make sure that the power supply coming in here was very stable and noise free. So any noise appearing on this line going into the UNO would immediately find a route down here and to ground and disappear rather than going down here. This capacitor, by the way, has got to be as close to the actual chip you're trying to decouple as you can. 
So this is known as decoupling. In the UNO, which uses a 328P chip, it's doubly important because we got two VCCs and at least two grounds because one is used for digital and the other side is used for analog. So when you do a digital write and all that, it creates a little bit of noise on this. So we need a decoupling capacitor on both sides to prevent noise finding its way from here into here and of course noise coming in from your power supply. Cool, that's decoupling, keeping the noise out. And yes, it really is required. And keep those capacitors as close to the chip as you can get them. Another use in an Arduino environment is that, is that of DC blocking. If you have a module of some kind, doesn't matter what it is, and it's producing a signal out, uh, let's let's assume it's creating some kind of tone wave or something and you have your uno or something over here that's expecting it to come in perhaps on a zero but it's all it wants is the actual sound wave or alternating current wave it does not want any kind of dc component in here to block any dc component you just put a capacitor in the way this wave can find its way through there no trouble at all, but DC stops at this point. So it's known as DC blocking and can really help in preventing your input here getting overloaded with a DC component of this signal rather than the alternating co um, component that you perhaps want to measure. So that's DC blocking, used sometimes and very useful it is too. Let's think about the units of measure now because that's quite important and uh, you don't want to get too confused about the values. We can have picofarads, we can have nanofarads and we can have microfarads. And as you saw from the beginning of this video, micro are normally larger values, say from one microfarad all the way up to a hundred microfarads can be a lot larger than that, but let's keep it down into a sensible range that we might be using in an Arduino environment. Nano, you probably get one nanofarad up to a thousand nano, but then you've got an overlapping range here with just different units. For example, a thousand nanofarads is one microfarad. So we tend probably not to use that value. We'd say one nanofarad, maybe two, a hundred nanofarads. 100 nanofarads is 0.1 of a micro, but we like to keep things in whole numbers. And picofarads we don't use at all in an Arduino environment, except for when we have an external crystal. The 16 megahertz crystal out of your Uno, which uh, electronically looks something like this. So that's your crystal running at 16 megahertz. Also has a couple of very, very small value and physically small capacitors connected like that. And these might be in the range of something like 20 PF, both of them. And that just makes sure this oscillates. But that's a very specialist case. And yes, it might be used in the Arduino world, but I'd say forget that. Unlikely to be used. Much more likely to be used in radio design. The other unit of measure that you really must take into account is voltage. Each capacitor has a maximum voltage it can operate at. More likely to apply to electrolytic capacitors in this microfarad range, but can also apply to these. But in an Arduino environment, I think we'll probably be all right with the nanofarads. They'll probably tend to work right up to a few hundred volts. Electrolytics, though, are a different kettle of fish altogether. Now, if you have an electrolytic capacitor in your circuit and it's rated at, say, 6 volts, you have to be very, very sure that you're never going to exceed this. And this is, I would say, borderline in an Arduino environment, 6 volts. It'd be better, instead of 6, to use a 10-volt capacitor, 10-volt rated capacitor, so that's double the voltage line. Don't go mad and use a 100 volt one, that's silly because the, the size of the capacitor gets bigger and bigger the higher you go up in the voltage rating. So 10 volts is about right for the Arduino environment. Of course, if you've got some motors or something running at 24 volts, then you will have to take that into account. 
and never ever use an electrolytic capacitor one in this range here the micros where the voltage of the supply the vcc is more than what the voltage of the electrolytic capacitor is or your electrolytic capacitor will have a very very short life indeed so in summary we've seen that capacitors can be used for decoupling across the vcc and ground of any chip not just the arduino anything you might be used We've seen that it can be used for DC blocking when you're connecting one unit to another and stops the DC element of the signal being passed across. And there is a sort of a, a, a slight case use of DC storage where you have probably a larger value electrolyt electrolytic capacitor, maybe 100 microfarad, that is placed close to a module that uses a lot of power. So you've got a greedy module here that uses bursts of power. And when this is connected up like this, um, the value of the electrical charge in here can be consumed by this greedy little module for quick bursts. If this were, for example, an NRF24L01, which is a little tiny radio transmitter that can transmit to other NRF24L01 transmitters, at the point of transmitting a few bytes of data out here, that's the symbol for an aerial, by the way. Um, it just requires that little burst of extra power, and a capacitor like this placed close to here can just supply that extra capacity. Not used very often, but if you do need it, that's a good way of doing it. Cool, that's it then. And remember, things to remember are, choose your voltage correctly. Never overrun it. And the symbol for a capacitor is always like that. Lovely. So there we have it, the uses of the capacitor in an Arduino environment. Not the most exciting components, is it really? And it's a passive component. It doesn't do a lot sitting there quietly decoupling or smoothing or whatever it's doing, but absolutely essential to some of the circuit design that we have in an Arduino world. Sorry, what's happened to the cookie one? Well, I couldn't possibly say. Anyway, see you in the next video. I hope you're finding these videos useful and interesting. There are plenty more videos to choose and a couple are shown below. And if you'd like to subscribe to this channel, just click on my picture below and enjoy the rest of the videos. Thanks for watching.